Vikings look to extend their win streak to four games and get back to 500 with a 5-5 five and five record as they host the Dallas Cowboys, who are absolutely struggling at 2-7. and seven. This game, like any game, is going to come down to winning your matchups. Number one, the Dallas Cowboys defense, led by defensive coordinator Mike Nolan, is 31st against the run. And they've just been really getting hammered on the ground now. Their last game before the bye against the Pittsburgh Steelers, they did a really good job, the Dallas Cowboys defense, against James Conner and the Steelers' rushing attack, and they're looking to possibly carry that over into Sunday against Dalvin Cook and the Vikings. They're going to have to prove it. If not, I think we're looking at possibly a replica of what we saw Vikings at Lambeau against the Green Bay Packers, just a heavy dose of number 33, Dalvin Cook. Now, some factors that... That may hinder Dalvin Cook and the rushing attack for the Minnesota Vikings. You look at Thursday's injury report where Ezra Cleveland, who's played really, really well on the offensive line at right guard, he was listed as a non-participant in Thursday's practice. Also, our stud fullback CJ Ham is now placed on the COVID-19 reserve list. So if either, or God forbid, if both players are unable to play, that could really hurt Dalvin Cook and potentially be an advantage for the Cowboys defense. Even so, if that is the case, the Vikings have an aerial assault weapon that has almost been as dominant, quite frankly, as Dalvin Cook has been on the ground, and that's Justin Jefferson. You can really tell that Kirk Cousins is starting to trust his rookie wideout more in those tough down situations, especially we saw that this past Monday night against Chicago. He's really, really starting to trust Justin Jefferson. You also got Adam Thielen, who I'm really looking to improve on his disastrous performance from this past Monday night. I know he had two touchdowns, but in between those two touchdowns, he struggled with drops, one of them leading to a Khalil Mack interception. He should play better. Add on to that, the Dallas Cowboys have really, really struggled at shooting themselves in the foot with stupid penalties, especially on the defensive side on the ball. Now, with that said, Demarcus Lawrence, he recently spoke with the media, and he's feeling confident that the Cowboys defense can turn things around. They understand this is a must-win game for the Cowboys to stay in contention, to still possibly win the division of the NFC East, even with a 2-7 and seven record right now. But I think the Vikings, they have a serious, serious shot of controlling this game offensively. Now, Defensively speaking, we all know that the main focus should be on Zeke Elliott, who's really struggled this year, not his best season, averaging under four yards a carry. At the same time, we have to be fair because the Dallas Cowboys offensive line, which has been a mainstay for them for the last several years, is in complete disarray right now. Also, we are aware that Andy Dalton is likely to make his return and start at quarterback after returning from that that extra dirty ass hit by John Bostick of the Washington football team, which by the way, off topic, those dudes had a whole eight hours, like eight to 10 hours in a board meeting to come up with a new name for their franchise, drinking several cups of hot ass coffee, probably playing connect Four, monopoly and sorry in between on their breaks. And at the end of that meeting, a light bulb went off and they got paid like $700,000 each. At the end of that meeting, a light bulb went off in one of their heads, and they said, I got it. We are going to be known as the Washington football team. I could have got paid to come up with that bum-ass name for like $50,000. Really? But we really don't know all seriousness. We really don't know what to expect from Andy Dalton this time around because this year he's had just two starts, one of which he got knocked out of the game. But we don't know what Mike McCarthy is, what adjustments he's made offensively coming out of the bye week for this upcoming Sunday against the Vikings. And Andy Dalton, he's been a solid starter for his career. I, I just wouldn't get cocky if I'm the Vikings defense and be like, we got this in the bag. Let's see what they have to work with. Now, as far as their receiving weapons are concerned, Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb, Jeff Gladney and Chris Boyd, that's where they come into play. If the Cowboys are going to threaten to win this game, that's going to be why. In fact, I wouldn't be shocked if on the first drive for the Cowboys offense where the defense, they may be locked in, all in on stopping Zeke Elliott, 
they may play from the outside in. They may go aggressive with their receiving weapons to set up the run game opposed to what they usually do, play inside out. So don't be cocky. Remember, I think the Vikings, they should win this game. I'm going to give a final score of 30 to 20. I think they'll get back to 500 with a 5-5 five and five record. But remember, the Vikings... They should have beaten a previously winless Atlanta Falcons team, and they lost. They got embarrassed. Stay humble, and you should be fine. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Your final scores uh, for Vikings versus Cowboys. We do this three times a week. Mediocre Best Sports Podcast with Realistic Randy. Check me out on Twitter at Realistic underscore Randy. Facebook at Realistic Randy. Next podcast will be on Monday reacting to the result of Vikings versus Cowboys. We'll see you then.